What up, Fortnite fam? It's your boy, Matt, back again to bring you the latest and greatest tips and tricks that will help make you a better Fortnite player. So, you're watching the pros at work, and you think to yourself, I want what they have. I want to become the next ninja. I want other gamers to see me and get excited that I was in their game. I want players to look up to me the same way I look up to the pros. The answer seems simple. You want to be a pro gamer. While setting off on the journey is easy enough, reaching the end is a whole different ball game. So today, we'll be going over six different mistakes you don't want to make on your way to stardom. Let's begin. One thing to be a professional gamer is not an impossible goal, but it will take plenty of hard work and dedication. One misconception is that being a professional gamer is the same as being a content creator. This is not 100% true. While both professions tend to overlap from time to time, the end goal will be different, and so will the steps to get there. As a pro gamer, you're going to be starting from the bottom, practicing your mechanics and grinding arena for points. Next, you're going to want to tackle online competitions so you can hopefully achieve a high enough score to get noticed. This also involves showing off your content and knowing how to market yourself. Being a content creator can be just as time consuming as being a pro, but in a different way. As a content creator, you can't just slap your latest gameplay recording together and call it a day. You need to practice your video editing skills, your voice narration, and even the content you want to share with the rest of the world. Not only that, but you're also going to need to come up with a script, so you're not always improvising when it comes time to record your voice. All of this takes time, and frankly, that could be better used for practicing the game if your true intention is to excel at competitions. So really take a moment to figure out why you want to go pro. Does the thought of competition excite you? Do you want to see yourself playing for a major esports organization and meeting other players on the same path as you? If so, then perhaps the heart of a champion is in there after all. Keep in mind that if you are still interested in the life of a content creator, you can still do that on the side. However, if you are starting off, it's best to choose one primary goal and roll with that. As someone who wants to go pro, you may think that all it takes is good skill and the ability to get high placements in a tournament. Well, this is only half true. In fact, the other half is all about making yourself marketable. One of the most important things you need to take into account while going pro is that your name needs to be spread out across the Fortnite community. You need to become someone who can be recognizable. This isn't always an easy task. With so many players trying to go pro, you need to think of unique ways to make yourself more visible. This is why you always see competitive gamers uploading their highest skill wins and clips of themselves building quickly. If you have the skills but forget to make yourself visible or keep records of your accomplishments, no one will want a duo with you or include you in a trio. They won't know who you are or what you've done. Many of the pros didn't start off in the same organizations as their current teammates. In fact, most of the time, newer pros tend to team up with others who are part of an organization already. This exposure can be just the kick you need to find yourself noticed. Hey, do you feel like you can't get better at Fortnite no matter what you try and do? Well, don't worry. It's something that even the pros go through from time to time. But do you know what the pros have that you don't? A pro coach, teaching them every trick in the book to break free from their stagnation. Our coaches are available 24-7 and can teach you to break through your barriers to become the best Fortnite player that you can be. All you need to do is visit the link in the description below today. When you're on the road to becoming a better Fortnite player, your first thoughts might be to become a pro before trying your first tournament. After all, who wants to show up to a competition without any chance of winning at all? The truth is actually quite contrary. Going into tournaments, even when you're not ready, is a great way to train for future competitions. Rather than waiting for the perfect time to jump in, just do it, even if you won't win. You'll gain plenty of experience seeing how the event works, but also the kind of players that will be competing. Keep doing this with every event you're eligible for, and you can even keep track of how much better you are becoming. Perhaps the first time you tried, you got eliminated right away and ended up with a horrible score. However, as the months go by, you find yourself lasting longer and getting a better outcome than before. These little victories are a nice boost towards morale since it shows that your hard work is not going to waste. Every tip and trick that you learn is bringing you one step closer to placing well at a competition. So keep up the work and don't worry too much about being ready. It's all a learning experience, and sometimes 
You just have to take a leap of faith. Hardware is important. This is where you'll be playing most of your matches in Fortnite. The game is free on consoles and PC, but while the game may be easily accessible, what you play on will have a dramatic effect on your performance. Perhaps you've been playing Fortnite on console. This is a great place to get started at a more cost-effective price range. If you're on Xbox, you can even use a mouse and keyboard to play. However, the ideal place to play will always come down to PC due to the customizability of the graphic settings which can offer more frames, less clutter, and a more versatile experience. You don't need the latest PC to play Fortnite. However, you do want something that will be able to achieve a high frame rate. What the PC will allow you to do is adjust your settings so even if your visuals aren't as polished, you're still running at the right speeds where you can keep up with the rest of the competition. Your monitor is also important for getting the most out of your frames. One easy to miss detail is your refresh rate and knowing what that means. You can have the most jacked up PC with the latest graphics card and processors, however, if your monitor still has a refresh rate of 60, you are only ever going to be able to see those 60 frames per second. While getting as many frames as possible is the ideal situation, monitors can be expensive, especially those with a high refresh rate. If you want to break into the world of competitive gaming, a sweet spot to land on is 144. You will still be getting more than twice the frames of the average 60Hz screen and it falls more in line with the competitive standard. Many of the pros we keep track of are known for their FNCS winning trios. There are even huge followings for certain duos. Fans love seeing this skill and chemistry mixing together and watching it play out during competitions. If only you could find teammates like theirs, you could become quite popular. Unfortunately, this is not a line of thought that you should be thinking about. Having a teammate to practice with is okay since this is about harnessing your skills. However, you should never rely on a team to become a pro. As a team, your senses are divided so you can focus on your specific skill sets more. This is why we divide roles into Fragger, IGL, Support, and Tarpa. However, you don't want this to be your main focus. Instead, you should start off by proving yourself as a competent solo player. When you grind solo arena, you are performing all of those actions all by yourself. You're building, you're managing your rotation, you're fighting for more elimination points. This is important because it puts all your skills to use so none of them lay dormant. The next tip goes hand in hand with our previous tip. Let's say you manage to get a good solo career going. The next step after that would be finding a partner or partners to consistently go after those duo tournaments and trio tournaments. This is a majorly important step towards going pro, but one that you need to consider carefully. One mistake we've all made at one point or another is choosing our own friends as our partners. After all, why not? You trust them and if they have the same dream as you, then why not let them in? The truth is, it's not always the best idea to choose your friends as your teammates. Being a pro gamer requires not only skill, but the ability to give and take feedback. Okay, let me give you an example. Let's say you're in the middle of a game and your trio is fighting another team. Suddenly, you find yourself getting beat down because the player who is supposed to be playing support starts soloing. Now, the correct course of action once this happens is to explain what went wrong and let your teammate know that as a support, they need to be between the two of you. Perhaps the problem is that your teammate is used to playing solo, or perhaps they don't notice themselves getting further away from the team. Whatever the problem may be, the first step towards finding the solution is to bring it up during feedback time. While this isn't always easy when your teammates are also your best friends. We tend to be less critical and more open to letting mistakes slide when the people making them are close to us. That's why normal jobs have a rule about hiring family members. Plus, if you do plan on becoming a professional gamer, you need to be open to dropping your current team and searching for new ones if you find that the partnership is no longer working out or that you have better synergy with someone else. How hard would it be to drop your best friend because they aren't keeping up while someone else is? It might even ruin the friendship. There are two types of skilled Fortnite players. You have your competitive pros and you have your creative warriors. Becoming a creative warrior requires you to grind that mode so you can learn all your mechanical skills. These players are great at 1v1s and build battles. However, those skills also take time to translate toward arena. No matter how good you become on creative, you will only ever be half a pro if you can't back it up with some true competitive play. After all, the ultimate goal of a pro, as we said earlier, is to prove themselves at competitions in the hope that they can be scouted for an organization. Believe it or not, creative is a better place to be a content creator. 
With so many different modes, exercise routines and opportunities to have training sessions with other players, it has enough variety to keep a channel full of content. However, from a pro gaming standpoint, people want to see that you can play against 100 other players and come out the victor. They want to see you get into intense box fights and build battles towards the end of a competition when the storm starts moving in. That wraps up things for today, Fortnite fam. Did you enjoy today's video? If you did, be sure to leave a like and ring that bell to keep up to date with all the latest and greatest tips we have to offer. Also, feel free to check out the rest of our channel for even more amazing content. So remember, work hard and perhaps someday you will be a Fortnite Pro. So remember, work hard and perhaps someday you will be a Fortnite Pro that we can all look up to. Until next time, the name is Matt, signing off.